This is a brief presentation about finding articles to help you answer your PICO question. Remember, in searching for articles to help you answer their PICO question you've developed, the goal is not to find articles necessarily that prove that your nursing intervention works and is effective. The idea is that you find high quality studies to help you answer your question. And remember, those high quality studies may demonstrate that the nursing intervention you selected doesn't work that well. But remember, that is just as valuable. Nursing isn't always about being right. It's about practicing high quality care informed by good research. So a quick disclaimer, finding articles to match your PICO question can be a longer process than you think. Always allow more time than you think you're gonna need to go through this process. Be patient, be persistent, and be thorough as you go through this process. But more than anything, plan ahead and give yourself plenty of time to work through this process. Not only do you need to allow lots of time to prevent stress and to do a good job, but finding articles to answer your PICO question literally creates the foundation for this entire course. So finding good articles to answer a well-developed PICO question will have very clear carryover effects for the rest of the semester. So take your time in this process. So some basic guidelines for finding articles to back up your PICO question are listed here. And these are some of those key requirements for articles. Just remember to always review your assignment guidelines, but I've listed some of the sticking points here where a lot of students have struggled in the past. So first, it must be a primary research article. The article must match your PICO question and include your population intervention and outcome of interest. The article must be published within the last 10 years, and it must be published in a peer-reviewed journal. So we're gonna go through in this presentation a little bit more depth as to what each of these things mean. So your first guideline, it must be primary research. What does that mean? What is primary research? Well, we have some definitions here. Primary research describes a single study conducted by a researcher or a group of researchers. So that article, if it's primary research, it's going to tell you a story. It's gonna describe how the authors conducted a study. They're gonna start off with a little bit of background saying you know, why you should read this article and what the issue is. And then they're gonna go into, here's what needed to be studied. Here was a gap in the literature. Here are our aims. It's gonna start off with some aims and some research questions or hypotheses. And then they're gonna tell you more about their study, how they recruited participants to come into their study, and then how they collected data. Maybe it was uh, conducting interviews. Maybe it was taking blood pressures. Maybe it was giving people a pain scale. Maybe it was giving people a questionnaire. They're gonna tell you the story and the tools they used, then they're going to tell you how they analyzed data. Maybe they did a statistical test or maybe they did content analysis with some other researchers. But basically, they've got this pile of data. Now, how did they analyze it to answer those questions? Then they're going to summarize some findings and some results for you and tell you basically what were the answers to the questions we asked at the beginning of this article. And then they'll typically conclude with a discussion about what all of this means, maybe some implications for nursing practice. Maybe they'll admit to some of the limitations that were in their study and they'll conclude with, okay, now that we've done this, this is what other people should do. So that's primary research. It's telling you a story of a very specific study that was conducted by those authors. So that sounds really straightforward, but there is other types of research out there. There is not so primary research, and some examples of those are systematic reviews, meta-analyses, quality improvement projects, program evaluation, editorials, and literature reviews. All of these are scholarly. All of these are examples of very good, high-quality published in peer-reviewed journals, etc. But these are not telling you the story of a specific study that was conducted. So for example, systematic reviews and meta-analyses actually are really, really helpful in other settings because this is telling you the story of research that, researchers that have gone out there and found all of the primary studies that have been conducted on a specific topic. And they're gonna take their time to systematically pick out specific studies that meet criteria and tell you what they've discovered by reviewing all this literature. It's really, really helpful, but it's not helpful for you in this specific course. Quality improvement projects and program evaluation those might look a lot like research, but they're not research because they actually will not call themselves a study or research. They will title themselves as quality improvement. So maybe it was a project that some nurses on a med surge unit did to decrease their fall risk. 
they didn't conduct research, but they wanted to reduce fall risk for just within their unit. So remember, for research, we are looking to generalize our findings. We're, we're conducting this study so that people can use these results and maybe implement them in their, uh, their settings. For quality improvement and program evaluation, they're basically just telling you the story of what they did for their specific unit or their specific area. And their intention isn't necessarily for you to generalize their findings. And then editorials and literature views, again, these are really helpful and very interesting to read and can be really useful when you're writing papers. But it's telling you kind of a summary, again, of what this author has read and what they have found about a specific topic. But they didn't go out there and actually conduct research. They, it didn't invite a bunch of participants into their study and collect blood pressures or blood samples or do surveys and then analyze the data. They're telling you kind of a summary of what's out there. So make sure when you're reading these studies that you can identify, is it primary research? Does it tell the story of an actual study that was conducted? Or is it not primary research where maybe they're kind of summarizing the research out there for you or they're telling you a story of something that wasn't a primary study? So let's look at your next requirement, and that is that the article must match your PICO question. So we're going to talk about quantitative first, and then in the next slide we'll talk about qualitative. So with quantitative studies, the study itself, this primary study that you're going to pick, must match your PICO question that you developed, meaning... The population, the P in your PICO question, must match the population and the sample that was included in this quantitative study. The intervention that you included in your PICO question, the I, that they are going to do music therapy or they're going to do aromatherapy or they are going to do physical activity, must match the intervention in the study that you read. So a lot of times if you say, I want the, uh, these patients to meditate to see if that lowers blood pressure. And in the study, they did yoga. Well, is yoga and meditation the same thing? So it sounds like your PICO does not match the intervention in that study. So the intervention must match the study. And the other key thing to remember here is there is a lot of quantitative research out there that you can't use. And it is primary research, but the reason you can't use it is because they didn't do anything to the participants. So for example, I can do a quantitative study where I'm just doing a descriptive study and I just want to measure everybody's blood pressure and see what the average blood pressure of this group of people is. I didn't do anything to them. There is no intervention. So you need to make sure you pick a quantitative study that actually includes an intervention. And only a select few uh, quantitative studies include interventions. Typically, the study design, remember there's a lot of sub-designs of quantitative research, is something like a randomized control trial or a randomized clinical trial. A lot of times we call it RCTs. That includes an intervention. Quasi-experimental or experimental studies will include an intervention. Think experiment means I do something to a group and I see what happened to them because of that. That would be appropriate. Cohort studies sometimes include interventions, not always, but sometimes. Longitudinal studies sometimes include interventions, not always. So make sure that just because something is quantitative, you need to make sure that that study also included an intervention. Now, interventions are less likely, not necessarily always unlikely, but less likely to be in quantitative studies that include these specific designs. So a descriptive design, correlational design, cross-sectional designs. Those designs are typically just getting information at one point in time. They're not getting information, doing something to a population, and then getting inter information again to see what that action did to them. So keep in mind that your quantitative study must include an actual intervention, and then make sure that the outcome in that study, the O, matches the O in your PICO. So how do you find the O or the outcome in the study that you've picked? You need to look at what they measured, maybe before and after this intervention. So for example, this will a lot of times be in a section titled measures or instruments. And they typically, they very, very rarely do they just measure one thing. They might measure anxiety, depression, self-efficacy, confidence, heart rate, blood pressure, height and weight, tons and tons and tons of measures. Just one of them needs to match your PICO question. So don't expect to find a study that only matches your uh, O, your outcome, that that's the only thing that they measured. But if the many things they measured includes the O in your PICO question, then you're good. So the outcome needs to match your PICO question, the intervention needs to match your PICO question, and the population must match. 
Now, we talk similarly about how the article must match your PICO question in qualitative, but we're a little bit more lenient here because not all qualitative research, and actually very, very little qualitative research, includes an intervention. A lot of times, qualitative research is describing people's lives, describing people's experiences. So for qualitative studies that you're going to identify that match your PICO, you need to identify two components, and if you get lucky, all three components, but you want to identify two components that match your PICO that are in that qualitative study. So for example, if I use my dolphin therapy example again, in adolescents with depression, I'm curious about if dolphin therapy compared to just standard care affects depressive symptoms. That's my PICO. Now I need to go and find a qualitative study that examines that. So rather than finding a study that has adolescents receiving dolphin therapy for depression, I really just need to find a study that explores adolescents and maybe just their experiences with depression, depressive symptoms or depression. That would be okay. It didn't include anything with dolphin therapy, but the idea here is I'm learning more about this population and this problem. Or maybe I found a study that explores adolescents and their experiences with dolphin therapy, but this time it happens to be for anxiety. That's okay too, because I've included my population and the intervention. And then maybe I find an, a qualitative study that explores dolphin therapy in the elderly, but they're depressed and I'm looking at their depressive symptoms. I still have hit two of my criteria for my PICO. I've got the intervention and I've got the outcome, the I and the O. So you can see here the qualitative study doesn't have to match all of the, uh, the elements of the PICO, but at least two elements of the PICO. And again, the idea here is in my quantitative study, I was seeing if an intervention was effective for my population, and in my qualitative study, I'm learning more about this issue. And then our last criteria here is that your article must be published in the past 10 years and be published in a peer-reviewed journal. So this is pretty straightforward. Just make sure you set your search limits to the past 10 years. Don't find these awesome articles, but they're published in 2001. And also make sure you're using your ASU library databases. That will help you identify your peer-reviewed journals. So things like CINAHL or PubMed. Also, sometimes you might click on an article and you won't have access and it'll want to charge you for that article. Say, pay $29.99 for this article. Never, never pay for an article. For the purposes of this course, you should not have to spend any money to find articles. If you don't have access to an article and it's just perfect and you really, really want this article, there's something called interlibrary loan. And it's basically where ASU librarians will request the article from another university or a college to get you access to that article. So it's a matter of clicking a button on your computer and clicking on the uh, interlibrary loan and filling out information and requesting that article. And keep in mind, when you're picking these articles, this is not just something to get out of the way, finish an assignment, and move on. These articles are going to follow you for the rest of the semester. So you are going to read these articles many times later on in the semester, and you are going to be critiquing it. So make sure you read the entire article as you're discovering which articles you're going to use to answer your PICO question.